here's my next project. Here are my bow chocks and my cleats. And um, they are solid bronze and they've got to be cleaned and polished. And uh, I've looked it up on the internet and I found a formula. I'm going to be making up my own paste. Um, I think I'm going to use the one that is uh, flour, salt, and uh, white vinegar. And uh, all things that we got right here around the house. And um, you make up that stuff and you put it on there and you have to let it sit for about 30 minutes. And then you come back and wipe it off and, and do uh, probably multiple applications because these are really... This is years and years and years of, uh, of patina that has built up on these these bow chocks. <clears throat> I've uh, seen a lot of time out on the salt. <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, my next little project, and uh, thought I'd get a, a little video of um, this this whole process that we're going to be going through here. Well, after two applications of the homebrew concoction they subscribe on the internet, this is all I got out of it. And I'm not happy. Uh, I would expect a whole lot more than that for uh, the, uh, the, you know, what somebody supposedly had tested. And I mean, you can see, I mean, it's, it, it didn't take off all that much of the crud. I mean, yeah, it, it was much better on the chocks. I mean, we're getting down there. But, uh, I mean, for, as far as these, the uh, cleats are concerned, nah, it, it, it really didn't. So, all right, I'm going to go radical. I'm going to go ahead and and uh, charge on into Brasso. Um, it's, uh, you know, been used for generations. I'm just going to go ahead and see what this says. And you'll notice the last thing on the, or maybe you can't, yeah, right there. Uh, it's got a list of all the different uh, things that it'll do. Um, and it's it said it will take care of uh, brass, copper, uh, stainless, chrome, aluminum, pewter, and bronze. And um, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and use that. And uh, may use some steel wool. I mean, I'm going to get radical with this. I mean, this, you know, the, you know, the, these everything here is is that's been on that boat has been on there for 48 years, and 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 more. You know, so that's that's what we're going to do. Well, this is going to end this section. Um, I'm going to leave these up here in Vermont. We're headed to the Cape tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to get down there uh, to spend some time with my folks again. But in the meantime, what I've done, um, I tried I tried the Brasso. And frankly, I mean, it's great stuff um, when the uh, material you're putting it on is up for it. But sadly, this stuff is so caked, it's unbelievable. You, you've got decades and decades of... Uh, Oh, I don't know what do they what do they call this the patina, crud build up on this, and the only way I've been able to get it off. Oh, well, well, let me first of all tell you what I did. I used this stuff. I used the brasso with a coarse steel wool. This this is the heavy stuff. Okay, it didn't even touch it. And, you know, this is about as good as I got right here, and this is not even close. Uh, you know, it's getting there. I'm thinking uh, I may have to set up my bench motor and do, use a wire brush. But other than that, especially on this heavy stuff, the only thing I've found that works is right here. I take in one of these knives. Uh, you, as I said in my last video, I'm not going to be using uh, folding knives anymore. Well, this is something a folding knife is good for because I'm not going to be pushing down on it. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm scraping. And you can see the kind of results I get here. Th this actually scrapes the, the crud right off from it. And and uh, it, you're you're, you're sc scraping uh, literally decades of patina that is built up on this thing, and that's frankly uh, every one of this these uh, pieces, the the cleats and the uh, chalks are going to have to be completely scraped down. Then have the coarse steel wool. Then go ahead and use the the, bra the brasso. So that's it. And uh, anyway, that's a sad reality, but that's the way things work. By the way, I'm an artist. That's why 
Uh, this is my uh, what I dab my paintbrush on when I'm working on my uh, my painting. So anybody interested, just go to Randall Gardner, American Realist. Randall Gardner, American Realist, and you can see a lot of the work I do there. I've, I've been at a lot of shows all over the uh, state of Vermont and, uh, and around. So anyway, all right, guys, that's it uh, for the for the cleats and chalks. Um, this is just going to be a long project, and it's all going to be scraping and so forth. Um, and uh, then we'll kind of go with the brasso after we get okay, done with that. So this is an in-the-process video. First of all, first thing I did with these was to scrape them, and I've been using just this blade, so I don't, I don't want to dull any of my other blades, but I scrape literally every square centimeter of all of them, cleats and chocks. Uh, scrape them all down as, as best as I can. But then um, what I did, especially on the first one of, uh, on all the rest of them, I did, there's 120 sandpaper and then 220 sandpaper. Um, on this one, I actually, I, I didn't, I kind of mislaid my, my other sandpapers, and so I got out this stuff, and I didn't realize this is 80. This is a wicked coarse. Well, it, it does the job, but the problem is it, it scratches very, very deeply, and you end up having to uh, use your 120 a lot just to take the scratches out. So I strongly suggest, I mean, if, if you do a decent job of scraping, just use 120 and then 220, and then after that, go to coarse steel wool. And uh, that gets you a pretty decent result. That'll get it pretty much buffed out. Uh, one of the things you're going to find, especially on old castings, and this is all solid bronze here, is that you're going to have areas that are, are just, uh, they, these particularly right underneath this, this uh, crook here, uh, this area right in here is not easy. It's always, it, it, and this is all, all of them that I've done so far, you know, they, both of these uh, chalks have been this way. Uh, there's just some areas that are just cruder, uh, more coarse, and see, I've got to do the edges on this too. But, I mean, I think if uh, if you do the process, you know, like I said, you scrape it all, and then you go ahead and do 120 and then 220, and then buff it out with uh, steel wool, you know, it gets a pretty decent result. You get a pretty high sheen, and uh, we'll get some more pictures of this in later in the video. Okay, so this is my other little side project for this trip. Uh, I just put this thing in the clamps last night. I'm just using uh, the new generation of tight bond glue because this is not going to be going outside. This is for use in the galley. Uh, covers the sink. It'll give her an extra little working surface. Um, this was on the boat. I have no idea what it was supposed to be. Um, but um, it had a couple of bars. I've got the original wooden bars that, that cross this here. Uh, but it's too big to go between the edging on the sink surface, uh, you know, on the front of that countertop, and the, the beginning of the faucet, you know, where the, where the faucet comes up there. So what I did, I just, it had already fallen apart. So I took this apart and took a section out of the middle of it, you know, just to cut it. So this is exactly 11 and a quarter across here. That's the width that I need. And it'll be very precise uh, laying down and it'll just fit very nicely there. The only problem with this is it never was right. You can see the height difference here. Uh, there's, there's a, you know, probably 16th of an inch maybe. Well, that's kind of a mess. And before they didn't mind because they just had the bars across there and let this be an uneven top. Well, what I've done is glued it so that the top is perfectly flush. And I'm going to maybe sand this out anyway. Uh, but I, then I'm going to come in with my really big sander and just buck this down to where this is just perfectly level and then put my uh, my old um, straps, my old wooden um, reinforcers across the bottom of this. But anyway, what I'm going to do is take this out of the clamps. I'm going to take it out to the boat and just see how it fits uh, over the sink area. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. Anyway, just, by the time this is all done, this is all going to be uh, stained and varnished up really pretty to match everything else in the boat. And uh, just going to be another little piece of uh, woodwork to make it look nice inside and uh, uh, dress up the cabin. Okay, so here's the project that we started down on the Cape when we glued this together. Um, and this is the one I already mentioned has got that raised section of about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, what I'm going to do... Uh, I've got uh, my rigid sander here all set up with some 
I think it's 80 grit. And I'm going to try to take it down with that. I've got a big old belt sander that will take this down in no time. But, um, you know, that's just for the back side. Uh, for the front side, this will easily be taken down with just, just the 80 grit. And then I'm going to hand sand it to, uh, to get it evened out and get it really nicely dressed before uh, doing the staining and uh, staining and urethane, which I think I'm going to do with this because I'm going to have it in the food preparation area. So. Anyway, moving along, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, I've got this pretty much sanded out, and it's fairly level. Um, those things were there to begin with. I have no idea what those screws were for. Maybe they had... I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I'm beginning to guess, that they had four little feet mounted onto this. Ah, focus, focus. There you go. Four little feet mounted onto the bottom of this. Um, and I think what this was used for was a fish cutting board because on the opposite side, you can see it, especially now that I've, I've sanded this. Look at this. I think they use this for cutting fish and it ain't going to be a fish cutter no more, but that's all right. You know, I can find a piece of plywood for that. This is going to be dressing up, uh, going over the top of my sink in the galley. Anyway, um, <laughs> the other thing, I'm, 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 these are the two original pieces that came off the bottom of it right here. Hang on, let me put the other one over here. Okay. And I'm looking at these, and I said, so, okay, so uh, I, these came off the bottom, and so they should line up with the holes, right? Watch this. Can you see that? No, nothing, nothing doing. Over here, same deal. Nothing lines up. And then it dawned on me. Stupid. <laughs> I cut probably a half an inch out of the middle of this. You know, actually only out of one side of this because the other one is fairly nice. And, 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 put, and then glued them back together. The whole idea being that I needed 11 and a quarter inches across here that perfectly fits between the edging on that countertop and the base of the, uh, the faucet that comes up. And it's perfect for that. It fits right in there. You saw that in the, in the other video. Hang on, let's focus in here. Um, and, of course, when you cut, cut that out of the middle of it, all of a sudden, hello, it's a lot shorter, and none of the screws are going to line up. So I'm just going to have to drill two new holes uh, for each one of these straps. They probably don't need to go on, but they're part of the original equipment. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, I know these fit down on, uh, inside the sink because... Uh, in other words, that, that the distance that they are apart will fit down inside the sink because uh, when I tried to test this out when it was too wide, uh, they were already fitting nicely inside the, the, the uh, width across the sink. So anyway, uh, but before any of that happens, before these get sanded out, cleaned up, put back on with new screw holes, what's going to happen is uh, this is going to be a little more sanding and then hand sanded. And then after that, uh, I start uh, staining everything. Um, one more part of this. I'm convinced these are not the same wood, obviously. Uh, you just look at it until they're not. Uh, this actually looks like, um, this looks like teak over here. But if this is teak, it's very, very light teak. And uh, I mean, you, you look at the grain of that. And yeah, that's, that's teaky grain. So anyway, uh, I'm going to finish sanding it out, and I don't know if it will balance out with uh, the stain that I'm going to be using or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's all going to get dressed out and, and um, uh, varnished very nicely, uh, and uh, it'll look good.